Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Bitter Pill. Uh, it's been a really super long time since I've done an episode, and I apologize for that. I've just been busy with this and that around the house and uh, work and other stuff. And uh, so I'm back and I uh, have a lot of things that I've been mulling over for a while and wanted to talk about, but just haven't had a chance to. Uh, so I hope I'm going to be able to do a burst of episodes here in the next uh, few days or a couple of weeks and catch up a little bit on stuff I wanted to talk about. And, and hopefully I can try to make this a little more regular so that um, people can come to expect to hear from me on a more regular basis. And you know, maybe I can build an audience behind uh, beyond 150 subscribers. That would be really nice. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about today was something that's been brewing for over a month now, and uh, you know, maybe it shows signs of dying down by now, so I really wish I'd had a chance to talk about it earlier, but, uh, yeah, and I really wa wondered if I could uh, contribute anything new, but I figured why not? I thought I'd uh, put in my two cents about uh, this so-called drama that's been going on between uh, the Young Turks network and uh, people that they've, frankly, been uh, you know, smearing in uh, horrible ways, telling horrible lies about people. Um, and so let's get to it. Uh, so <clears throat> the, the title of this video is a reference to a comment by Hassan Piker, uh, who, as it turns out, is uh, a, the nephew of Cenk Iger, one of the co-hosts of TYT, of the Young Turks Network. And when he was interviewed by Kyle Kalinske and Crystal Ball, uh, YouTube uh, personalities uh, on their show, Crystal, Kyle and Friends, uh, they characterized the uh, controversy wherein basically what happened was uh, the Young Turks had been uh, personally attacking people on the left, uh, such as Jimmy Dore and Aaron Maté and um, Max Blumenthal, Glenn Greenwald, and various others. Uh, and uh, they had been defending themselves, uh, basically. Um, but they described, or excuse me, Hassan Piker described this brouhaha as, quote, Jimmy Dore drama, and said he didn't want to get involved in Jimmy Dore drama. And Kyle and Crystal just sort of laughed it off and agreed with him. Uh, they didn't use those terms, but they just said, yeah, um, you know, totally, we don't want to get involved with uh, personal issues. Uh, and let's just say I have a big problem with referring to it that way and with with Hassan Piker referring to it that way and with uh, Kyle and Crystal's assent to that framing uh, because the so-called drama was precipitated by the Young Turks in response to criticisms of their politics wherein they for example advocated uh, for the bombing of Syria and uh, have uh, smeared Julian Assange um, and are, are constantly accusing people on the left of being uh, paid by the Russians or, Ru you know, allies of uh, Russia uh, or of uh, Assad, the president of Syria. Um, and even uh, basically made up a uh, sexual harassment allegation against uh, Jimmy Dore, which uh, we'll get into and I'll explain why it really wasn't. Uh, sexual harassment, um, even though there is a concrete incident that happened. Uh, so, you know, so basically, again, this is a smear campaign by the Young Turks to deflect attention and criticism from uh, their um, basically, uh, at this point, mainstream Democratic Party politics um, with people like Aaron Mate and Jimmy Dore. Uh, basically defending themselves. So this all started when 
Aaron Mate, among others, uh, made fun of a stupid tweet by uh, Cenk Iger, um, a co-host of the Young Turks. Um, and Annika Sparin is his uh, co-host. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I can find it here. Uh, so here's where it all started back in late May. Uh, Cenk Iger uh, tweeted, Israelis palace and Palestinians kill each other over which sky god they pretend to speak to, and it's politically incorrect to point out that there is no human god, let alone one that favors Jews or Muslims. All this violence over the equivalent of which character they like better in the uh, MCU. Uh, I don't recall what that stands for, but anyway. Um, Aaron Maté's response to that, which is just... Absurd. Obviously, uh, the conflict between Israel and Palestine is uh, over uh, you know, control of the land in that region with the uh, Jewish Israelis uh, basically uh, booting people out of their homes and uh, uh, you know, committing uh, ethnic cleansing against them. Um, it has nothing to do with uh, religion. Uh, in fact, uh, Jews and Muslims uh, worship the same God. They just call uh, their God different things. Um, and, you know, it, it's really a conflict uh, involving uh, colonialism by uh, Zionist uh, Jews uh, and uh, colonized people, Palestinians. And... You know, uh, if you recall from back in May when Israel was bombing Gaza and uh, you know, ethnically cleansing the neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah and so forth, you know, a lot of American Jews uh, were uh, very, very critical of what was going on. And uh, it's increasingly becoming the case that uh, Jewish people in the diaspora, as well as uh, uh, non-Jewish people, um, are no longer okay with the way Israel is uh, you know, behaving. Um, well, that's another story. Uh, my point is, uh, you know, uh, Chink Iger is really off base here. And, uh, you know, it's, as you can uh, see from the... Uh, oh, let's see. I don't think I've... Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't... Uh, there you go. Uh <laughs> always forget to do that. Um, as you can see, uh, thousands of uh, people responded to Cenk, and most all of them uh, very uh, critical or mocking him. And Aaron Maté mocked him by saying, My God tells me that this is the worst tweet of all time. Um, and, you know, for some reason, even though there were literally thousands of people uh, you know, laughing at Chink on Twitter for this absurd take on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, for some reason, what Aaron Mate said really got under his uh, craw, um, got under his skin. And so, you know, uh, he and uh, Anna, in a episode of their show, The Young Turks, <laughs> uh, decided to uh, smear Aaron Mate uh, in response to his tweet. So let me play that for you. It, it's pretty uh, crazy. Can't I can't. Okay, see, that's what happened. I can't stand, my, I can't stand that guy, and I can't stand the very intentional disinformation they put out there in regard to disgusting dictators around the world, the very people they seem to be working for, to be quite honest with you. Let's move on. All right, we're done. Disgusting. Uh, Absolutely disgusting. They said uh, Aaron Mate yelled at me. And so oh, Aaron I'm, Mate oh, lied. Oh, oh, Aaron Mate. Oh, everyone cares what Aaron oh, Mate oh, has to sorry, say, oh, right? The, the guy part. who denies that Syrian children were killed with chemical attacks. Yeah, yeah. And fuck gets Aaron paid Mate. By the, yeah, fuck yeah. you. Anyway, let's move on. Russians. Let's end the freaking pot. I can't. I can't. Okay, see, that's what happened. I can't stand. You just my, saw I can't it. stand that guy. And I can't stand the very intentional disinformation they put out there in regard to disgusting dictators around the world. The very people they seem to be working for, to be quite honest with you. Let's move on. All right, we're done. Disgusting. Uh, Absolutely disgusting. But... Okay, so 
you get the idea. Uh, they're just going off on this rant where they claim that uh, Aaron Mate is paid by the Russians, uh, seems to be working for dictators, and uh, are denying uh, chemical weapons attacks on Syrian children. And uh, you know, that's uh, <laughs> these alleged uh, uh, views of Aaron are and uh, you know, alleged uh, corruption are sufficient for her to flip him off. Um, so, naturally, Aaron didn't take kindly to being smeared like that. Um, and Aaron goes on to say, uh, Chink Iger and Anna Kasparian are free to have their strong feelings about me and act them out on TV, but they're not entitled to lie about me with claims that I am paid by Russia and dictators and that I deny chem chemical attacks on children. That's McCarthyite trash and libelous. Uh, and, you know, just for the... Oh, uh, you know, another smear that Anna came out with, uh, well, she and someone who uh, made a, a video... Uh, uh, about Aaron, um, you know the the person who made the uh, video, whose name is uh, Matthew Dimitri, uh, doctored a clip of Aaron talking about his recent trip to uh, Syria, where he uh, reported on uh, what was going on there, um, where Aaron had basically said something to the effect that. Uh, uh, you know, a, a large proportion of the Syrian people uh, supported Bashar al-Assad, whatever you think of him. Uh, a lot of Syrian people support him because uh, he had been able to uh, you know, save the country from being uh, taken over by uh, radical uh, uh, Islamo-fascists, uh, affiliates of ISIS and uh, al-Qaeda, uh, who... Uh, engaged in you know, horrible acts of brutality, uh, torture, and uh, killing people, and so forth, in the portions of Syria where they were able to take over. Um, and you know, with the backing of uh, Saudi Arabia and similar uh, right-wing uh, is Islamic uh, regimes in the Middle East, are trying to turn... Syria into a little uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, and, you know, Assad uh, prevented that from happening with the help of uh, Russia and Iran and some others. Um, and, you know, on many occasions, uh, part of the propaganda campaign against Syria has been uh, to you know, accuse them of using chemical weapons against uh, uh, people. Uh, and, you know, those claims have been uh, debunked by the um, uh, Organization for the uh, Prevention of uh, Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. Uh, uh, not the head of the organization, but uh, whistleblowers who uh, blew the whistle on attempts to cover up uh, an investigation of a uh, alleged chemical weapons attack in Duma, which... Uh, they argue and present evidence uh, didn't actually happen uh, as far as they can tell. You know, there's no evidence that it happened, and if it did, it was uh, unlikely to have been uh, the Syrian regime. Uh, you know, that's a, a topic for another um, show. But uh, anyway, just wanted to fill you in on the background of uh, uh, you know, what... Uh, you know, what the actual position of Aaron Mate is, you know, not that he supports uh, Bashar al-Assad, uh, you know, which they clipped portions out of what he said to make it look like that's what he was saying, but that uh, you know, many of the Syrian people uh, support him for the reasons that I mentioned. Um, <clears throat> Okay, let's temporarily go back to this. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, this is, this is not a new smear. And of course, the uh, allegation of uh, someone on the left supporting Bashar al-Assad was thrown at Tulsi Gabbard 
uh, when she was critical of U.S. policy toward Syria. Uh, and, you know, that was one of many smears that uh, uh, TYT and many others uh, threw at Tulsi Gabbard uh, during her, her uh, presidential campaign. And uh, if you watch this show early on, you'll know that uh, I devoted a lot of attention to uh, debunking those smears, uh, both in uh, episodes of the show and in things that I've uh, written on my Medium blog. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like that, that's really uh, important, um, that we not let people get away with it uh, when they just basically invent uh, things that are unflattering about people who are you know, opposing U.S. imperialism or otherwise uh, fighting for justice. Uh, you know, lately, if you've been following on Twitter, there's been a lot of uh, smears directed at uh, people who are organizing marches for Medicare uh, for all, um, where they're falsely accused of being right-wingers and so on and so forth. But anyway, um, you know, uh, this tendency to... Uh, accuse anti-war activists of specifically those uh, opposing U.S. Uh, support of the so-called rebels in uh, Syria, uh, you know, accusing them of being pro-Assad, it's equivalent to what we heard back during the movement against the Iraq war, uh, where we were accused of being pro-Saddam Hussein. Um, so you know, this goes back a long time. And I should note, the Young Turks was not always like this. Um, I, I don't have them called up right at the moment, but uh, Cenk Tiger made some tweets about Syria back in April uh, 2018 when the alleged uh, gas attacks in Duma, Syria uh, happened, and then the U.S. retaliated by bombing Syria. Uh, at that particular time, uh, he expressed skepticism about whether... Uh, Syria, the Syrian government engaged in these uh, chemical attacks, or perhaps whether they happened at all. Uh, now, he wasn't consistent about that, but, and in fact, he's uh, been kind of a, a pro-imperialist uh, uh, person politically, uh, you know, in many respects, for a long time. Uh, back in 2013, uh, when Syria was also accused of engaging in a chemical weapons attack. Um, you know, he uh, believed that claim, which you know, has also been debunked, uh, and supported bombing Syria back then. Uh, and he's expressed support for bombing Syria on a number of occasions. Um, and you know, that was another smear, actually, that he threw at uh, Jimmy Dore was that Jimmy Dore was lying when he said that Cenk had supported bombing Syria. Um, but, you know, as you might guess, there were video clips of Cenk uh, doing exactly that. Uh, but, you know, uh, the Young Turks got a, a huge uh, sum of cash, over $20 million, from Democratic Party as well as uh, some uh, Republican uh, wealthy political donors. Um, back in, I believe it was 2018, um, and you know, even though they were very much a politically mixed bag uh, before that, so back in 2016 they swung from burning, supporting Bernie Sanders in the primaries to not talking about the fact that Sanders was cheated, really, and uh, supporting Hillary Clinton uh, in the um, you know, general election campaign. Uh, but, you know, there, there were some things that you could argue were kind of progressive about their politics. Uh, I, I suppose there still are, but uh, uh, the, the injection of money from uh, uh, Katzenberg and other uh, wealthy uh, donors uh, marked a turning point because uh, since then, um, you know, they've uh, you become more uh, hawkish on foreign policy, and uh, uh, you made excuses for Democrats in Congress who were not uh, you know, fighting for 
major social reforms. Um, and they've taken to regularly smearing people. Uh, so they smeared uh, Julian Assange, claimed, uh, claimed that he was working with Trump to uh, help Trump get elected, and you know, he couldn't be trusted uh, because of that and all, all this crap. Uh, and uh, uh, former TYT uh, journalist uh, Emma Weiglin, former TYT commentator, I should say, I hesitate to call anybody from TYT journalists, uh, went from uh, liking and praising Tulsi Gabbard to absolutely hating and constantly smearing her, uh, much as uh, Anna Kasparian has, uh, in the space of a few months. Uh, you can go back and watch old TYT episodes where um, Emma Weigland is uh, you know, singing the praises of Tulsi Gabbard, and then you can go a little later and find ones where she's smearing her and expressing just visceral hatred, of, uh, you know, apparently, as far as we can tell. Um, so, so Jimmy had Aaron Maté on his show. Jimmy Dort had Aaron Maté on his show to debunk uh, the Young Turks' claims about Syria um, and to rebut uh, TYT's uh, smears of Aaron Maté. Um, you know, because, I mean, you know, they attacked Aaron Maté and... Uh, you know, with all these smears that I already uh, covered, and they had no rebuttal to anything substantive that Aaron said, whether uh, it was uh, you know, the uh, cover-up of the investigation of the alleged uh, gas attacks, um, uh, or you know, the uh, fact that the so-called rebels uh, are basically Islamic fascists associated with Al Qaeda and uh, ISIS, um, and you know the fact that uh, even if they think of him as you know a lesser evil, uh, the Syrian people are largely behind uh, Bashar al-Assad. Uh, you know, they backed him over an opponent in a uh, recent Syrian election. Um, who in fact was one of the one of the terrorists, um, <clears throat> and Cenk Iger claimed that Assad couldn't have won the recent Syrian elect presidential election; that the election was fraudulent, um, and the main basis of his claim that Aaron was uh, an Assad supporter was that Aaron stated the fact that Assad had the support of most Syrians. Uh, Cenk had no rebuttal based on evidence to this, so instead he uh, smeared Aaron. And TYT has never reported any of the relevant facts about Syria, that U.S. troops and Kurds are illegally occupying northeast Syria, stealing Syria's oil, because uh, that's where the oil fields are, as well as the wheat fields, so they're blocking Syria's oil and wheat production, basically starving the Syrian people. Uh, they TYT has never talked about the brutal sanctions on Syria, uh, that are really quite similar in severity to those against Iraq in the 1990s that killed hundreds of thousands of people, uh, which reminds me um, that Anna Kasparian, uh, co-host of TYT, uh, about a year ago conducted a fawning interview with uh, former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, who told 60 Minutes, I believe it was, uh, that... You know, when she was asked, you know, like hundreds of thousands of children have died in Iraq as a result of the uh, sanctions on Iraq. You know, this was back in the 1990s. Um, you know, uh, are, are you sure this is the right policy? And she said, we think the price is worth it. Uh, and anyway, Anna Kasparian conducted an interview with Madeleine Albright where she acted like uh, Madeleine was this you feminist icon, you're the first woman secretary of state, and you're just gushing over her and not asking any hard uh, questions. Um, and, you know, of course, uh, Jimmy Dore and Aaron Maté and uh, you know, many other uh, left commentators have criticized TYT for all of this. Um <clears throat> And then, you know, in response to being criticized for their substantive political errors on Syria, as well as their smears of Aaron, um, 
let's see, where are we? All right. <clears throat> Sorry, Aaron and Jimmy, you know, responded to uh, the smears of Aaron. Um, and TYT then responded with a hashtag me too smear against Jimmy, claiming that he sexually harassed Donna when he worked at TYT and threatening to go public if he didn't stop criticizing them. Um, so, Anna actually uh, sent a uh, PM to Jimmy that said this. I'm sure you remember when you constantly made inappropriate comments about how sexy you found me at work and even felt the need to ask me where I shop for my jeans so you can get a pair for your wife so she dresses better. That was followed by an apology card you wrote me for the degrading harassment. I've been holding back, letting you run your mouth nonstop as if you're some sort of warrior for what's good in the world. That's going to change. So essentially threatening Jimmy that if he doesn't shut up with his uh, political criticisms of the Young Turks, that she would let loose with uh, uh, allegations of uh, sexual harassment. And you know the only example she gives of this supposed... Uh, uh, the only specific example she gives is uh, when uh, Jimmy you know, asked Anna where she got her jeans. You know, he liked her jeans because uh, he wanted to get a pair for his wife. Um, and Anna throws in a subtle insult there, so she dresses better. Um, and, well, let's hear uh, Jimmy's uh, side of this story. Um, and you will also hear some from... Uh, Aaron here. Um, okay, so uh, in response to uh, getting this you know, blackmailing DM from Anna, uh, Jimmy uh, explained on his show the actual incident uh, for which he apologized, which he said happened in 2014. Um So, so basically, what happened was that uh, Anna, uh, as she apparently had a tendency to do, uh, you know, dressed in a, a wore a very short skirt uh, to work, uh, and she she was wearing a thong underneath it, um, and. You know, she bent over to pick something up and, and basically flashed the uh, whole newsroom. Uh, and you know, so, so Jimmy said, uh, nice news skirt. And everybody laughed and she was embarrassed. And, you know, he, he didn't, he says he didn't really want to embarrass her. Uh, um, but uh, just, you know, Kind of making, you know, because he's a comedian, you know, in a joking way, he pointed out that uh, she probably didn't want to be showing her ass literally to uh, everybody uh, who was there. Um, so he apologized to her, said, hey, you know, uh, I won't do that again. I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to embarrass you. And I uh, wrote her an apology card and gave her a gift the next day. Um, and, you know, uh, she, uh, according to Jimmy, was like, oh, forget about it. Don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. Um, and it, the incident was forgotten. Um, but let me just uh, show you uh, what uh, Jimmy and Aaron had to say about all of this. Let's see. Uh, the problem that I have with the segment comes afterwards, where he tries to, I think, draw a distinction between what the... Okay, I'm sorry. I, I should go back a little bit. All right. Well, let me, let me talk a little more about what happened. Um, 
Okay, so Anna sends uh, Jimmy this blackmailing uh, DM. Um, and, of course, Jimmy's not going to stand for being smeared and uh, blackmailed. Um, so, having worked at TYT for uh, a number of years, uh, he was actually with the Young Turks and had his own show called... Uh, uh, which he did with a, a number of other people called Aggressive Pro Progressives for uh, several years, as well as being a, a commentator on their uh, regular show at times. Um, and so having worked at TYT for many years, uh, he knew a thing about her, her too about them that most people didn't. And in particular, he knew that Cenk and Anna had uh, basically tried to be a... Uh, lefty news show version of the Howard Stern show in a lot of ways for many years. Uh, you know, TYT's bread and butter episodes, it turns out, uh, arguably their main path to popularity, were raunchy Howard Stern style segments where, for example, they would show a close-up of a woman wearing you know, tight pant tights or something like that, um, which, you know, obviously, uh, if a woman wears uh, tight-fitting clothing, then you can see the contours of their uh, vagina under the clothing. Um, and, and so they would show close-offs of a celebrity wearing you know, tight-fitting clothing in, in that area uh, and ask people to guess the camel toe. That is, guess who, what celebrity <laughs> that crotch shot belongs to. Uh, they also showed... Um, Upskirt photos, non-consensually taken upskirt photos of celebrities were uh, female celebrities who were, some of them weren't wearing uh, panties. So, for example, Britney Spears. Uh, and so they showed Britney Spears' uh, vagina, uh, you know, censored, of course, because it was YouTube, um, uh, and discussed uh, <laughs> that on their show. Um, you know, and uh, you've... Uh, he mocked her appearance, uh, said she had a quote-unquote old cooch, um, and that she uh, you know, claimed that she was overweight and uh, uh, that her uh, you know, face looked bloated or whatever. And uh, Chink said, I wouldn't even do her. You know, I wouldn't sleep with you know, Britney Spears, uh, you know, someone who uh, had been voted among the sexiest women on the uh, planet in uh, many a, a poll, uh, you know, roughly at that time. Um, and they also, uh, they also posted uh, nude photos uh, that uh, women's ex-boyfriends had uh, posted of them online, and you're getting revenge on them. Uh, so, you know, non-consensually uh, posted, uh, new, you know, pornography, revenge porn, uh, you know, Chink and Anna were showing that on their show. I mean, they, they couldn't show the uncensored version, of course, because uh, YouTube doesn't allow nudity, but they would then tell people, you know, go to our website and look at the uncensored version of uh, these nude pictures, or go to the we our website and look at the uncensored version of the upskirt photos of Britney... Uh, Spears vagina. Um, you know, so, so, you know, they're making money off of this. And, uh, you know, they uh, even you know, did a uh, episode for their patrons where, where they talked about uh, how popular these sorts of episodes were. Um, Jake also, on the air, harassed a woman who worked at TYT uh, who had uh, gotten an offer from uh, Playboy to uh, pose nude, and she turned it down because uh, you know she just didn't want to do anything like that. Um, and Chink was hassling her, saying, "Well, how how much money would it take for you to pose nude? What's your price?" And she said, "Well, you know, I, I wouldn't do it. I, you know, that would uh, damage my career. It's not something I want to do." And Chink said, "What career?" Um, and uh, you know, Chink has just this long reputation for publicly making sexist remarks about women, uh, and whether on air or off. And that's one reason why when he ran for Congress, 
He didn't get anywhere. So, into the fray, suddenly, steps Kyle Kalinske, another YouTube uh, commentator, uh, who at the time was affiliated with TYT, although you know he wasn't directly a member of the regular TYT cast, but his show, the Kyle Kalinske, you know, a Secular Talk, excuse me, uh, had an affiliation with TYT. Um, but he claimed that he didn't want to get involved because he was friends with Jimmy Dore as well as Chink and Anna, but, you know, guess what? He's, he did get involved in a very egregious way. Um, and, you know, I'll... I'll I'll let uh, Jimmy and um, Aaron talk about this. But the segment comes afterwards where he tries to, I think, draw a distinction between what the middle-aged McCarthyites, a.k.a. the Young Turks, said about me and what they said about you. And to me, there's no distinction. They smeared me. And then when they got called out for that, instead of owning up to it, they then tried to smear you and blackmail you. And... What I take issue with is any attempt to downplay that and dismiss that as personal drama, which is not. It's just a continued smear attempt. And um, a refusal to recognize that is, I think, what, what, I, what I think Kyle is missing here in okay. this segment. I, I agree 100%. And so let's Oops. keep keep going. So Crystal and I were planning to have Jimmy on Crystal, Kyle, and Friends one day. We were planning to have Jank on Crystal, Kyle, and Friends one day. And then as we watched this, we decided, you know what? We don't want to have either one of them on right now. Because then we would be responsible for getting in the middle of this absolute mess. And we would have to ask really uncomfortable questions that are really personal in nature. And I don't want to have anything to do with some personal shit. That's not true. Nothing at all. I care about policy. I don't care about personal shit. You wouldn't do. I don't. Uh, so you go ahead. Do you want to? You want to say something, Aaron? Well, if you care about policy, then why not? And you recognize that the smear of me was ridiculous. Why not just call that out to begin with? Because, look, my, my problem here is that when people stay silent on so, something so egregious as slander, you know, uh, then you're giving sort of a tacit endorsement to it, even if you think it's obvious what everyone's going to think your opinion is. If people, prominent people on the left say nothing when someone gets accused of working for Russia or for dictators. I see that as a tacit green light because because like that that means it's a question of like, are there red lines or not in, in media? So like if you were to criticize me for my positions, if you were to criticize me for going on Tucker Carlson, as some people do, that's a, that's like that's a criticism. And that's fair to do that. And we can debate the merits of that. But when you lie about someone and you basically invent a claim that can seriously damage someone's reputation and career. And that, that to me is a red line and that deserves to be called out. And the problem I have is like trying to conflate this ensuing, the ensuing controversy over this with drama when really, again, what this was was just a smear. And if you think it's fucked up now, then why couldn't you call it out when it began? Because I really believe that if people had called it out, more prominent people had called it out earlier, that wouldn't have given the Young Turks the green light to keep going, to keep doubling down, to keep attacking me, and then extend this to you when they made up this bullshit sexual harassment charge against you. So again, yeah, that's the problem I have with this. It's like, it's it's not giving uh, proper enough uh, focus on the thing that started this whole thing, which was them slandering me and not being held accountable for it. And So, yeah, you know, basically... Uh, He's making a, a, the point here that this is not drama. This is uh, you know people being personally attacked, um, and if you're if you're their friends, uh, you know, or or even just you know allies, then you know it's incumbent on you to not let personal attacks stand you know, because. Uh, you know, if you care about somebody, you don't want to see their reputation being uh, unfairly uh, damaged. Um, and you know, so, you know, Kyle's excuse for not wanting to get involved, and now then all of a sudden he is involved, but, you know, avoid getting involved 
for a while. Uh, you know, it just uh, doesn't wash uh, to me. Um, okay, let, let's go on because uh, you know, it's being personally involved themselves, they can explain what happened uh, uh, better than I can. Uh, And she's getting criticized. So I'm going to show you what happened. He was talking about why he didn't want to have people on the show. We're not going to have anybody on the show. Well, what happened was they booked me like a month earlier, right? So I, like on June... Okay, here's where uh, it uh, gets worse. Because um, you know, they were actually... Kyle Kolinsky and Crystal Ball, who have the show Crystal, Kyle and friends that I mentioned before, we're going to have Jimmy Dore on the show. Um, and, you know, he had uh, done a lot to promote their show in the past. Um, so, you know, they set a date to have him on the show. Uh, and then the day comes and he doesn't hear from them. They haven't told him uh, anything about the appearance. And uh, he is like, you know, <laughs> what's going on? And then they uh, didn't write him back for a few hours. But anyway, I'll, I'll let him describe it in more detail. First, I was texting with Crystal, and I said, uh, looking for, she asked me to tweet out their new show. She was like, hey, could you help promote our new show? And I said, done, I did it. I helped promote their new show. And she says, I said, looking forward to Kyle KKF. Kyle has not floated any dates to me yet. And she said, all right, I'll bug him, and thank you. You've always been so good to us, and I am truly grateful. And so you heard Kyle also refer to me on the Joe Rogan uh, clip as his good friend. So the way they treated me after this was not like a, you would treat a friend or even an enemy. The way they treated me was unbelievably rude and unprofessional to the extreme. So you see that I have a date book. So she gives me the date I picked June 24th. So when June 44th comes around, I'm ready to go do this show. And uh, I realized I haven't been, they haven't given me a link. They haven't nothing. There's no text reminding me, no nothing. So at, at, we're supposed to go at 10 a.m. And I, at 5 to 10, I texted them both saying, hey, I have this on my calendar today. Is it, are we still doing it? And they ghosted me. So they decided not to have me on the show, and they didn't tell me. They didn't send me an email the day ahead of time or even the day or whatever. Nothing. And they didn't respond to my text when I sent it to them. They just ghosted me. And... Then about two and a half hours later uh, in the afternoon, so I was supposed to do it at 10 a.m., around 12.30, they sent me a text. And here's the text, okay? And the reason why I bring this up is because Kyle brought it up. So now that's why I'm bringing this up, so I'm going to tell you. So uh, I, here's my text. Are we doing a show today? My calendar says we are. And Kyle says, hey, Jimmy. So again, that was, again, at two, and a half, two hours later, two and a half hours later, after they ghosted me, he says, Hey, Jimmy, we are trying to stay as far away from the war between you and Aaron and TYT as possible. On the policy, we agree much more with you. Russia, Syria, forced to vote, etc. We're disturbed by Anna's attacks on Aaron, but we also didn't like the way you talked about Anna's dress. Huh? What? The effing F? Are you kidding me? That's my good friend? Making a false equivalency, validating a, a, a complete, transparently bullshit attack. Uh, I'm sorry, what, uh, what is being referred to there is uh, uh, that when Jimmy uh, talked in an earlier episode of his show about uh, this incident um, where he said a nice news skirt when Anna was basically... Uh, flashing the newsroom as a result of her short skirt and uh, wearing uh, skimpy underwear, um, that, uh, you know, he said that she was dressed inappropriately uh, for, you know, the office. Um, and Kyle Kalinske got all offended by him saying that she was dressed in inappropriately and uh, basically said uh, he was... Uh, slut shaming her by saying that she was dressed inappropriately uh, for that situation. Well, you know, he wasn't saying that no woman should ever dress that way, and she was a 
slut for dressing that way. You know, he was saying, well, you know, you might wear, uh, you know, something like that to a bar, perhaps, or, uh, you know, of course, it's perfectly fine and uh, you know, accept it as normal for women uh, to wear skimpy clothing at the beach you know, or, or men to you know, not have a shirt on or whatever. But, uh, you know, you wouldn't typically dress that way at work. Um, and he wasn't saying that she should be ashamed of herself or something for dressing that way, just commenting on the fact that people don't ordinarily dress that way when they go to work. Um, and yet you know, Kyle thought this was you know, this shameful thing, and he uh, said he uh, just wanted to punch Jimmy uh, and beat him up for saying something like that, which is absurd because he, you know, he didn't say that uh, he wanted to do anything like to Anna and Shank for all their personal attacks on other people. Um, anyway, let's go on. Yes. It, and is Anna your executive? Is Anna the executive in this situation? Yes, she's she's the executive in the situation. Huh. Uh, as friends of you and Jank and Anna, we're p pressing pause on having anyone involved on the show. We're sorry, Jimmy. Hope you understand. So they didn't press pause, though they didn't. So it would they could have just stopped there. Hey, Jimmy, we are trying to stay as far away from the as possible. They could have just stopped there. They didn't. They had to keep going. And it got insulting. And so uh, it was already insulting because they ghosted me and they didn't, t they didn't give me a heads up that they had decided to cancel me until after the, we were supposed to do it. Super rude and unprofessional. But that's okay. I I'll handle it. So I sent them a text back and here it is, but I'll read it to you. I said, I'm stunned by this. You are trying to draw a ridiculous false equivalency that ultimately takes the sides of a blackmailing and smearing of me and a McCarthyite smear of Aaron. The way I talked about Anna's dress amounted to me saying nice news skirt. I told this joke at a time when Anna and Jenk were doing segments such as mocking Britney Spears' old cooch in their effort to become the Howard Stern Show. And the way I responded to Anna's embarrassment at my joke was to apologize and send her a card immediately without a pressure campaign or threat of a blackmail. As a f uh, I, I should... Uh just revise what I said earlier. The, the way that Kyle's uh, text to uh, Jimmy was phrased, you know, the way I talked about Anna's dress, you know, it, it's ambiguous whether he's referring to the incident itself where he, um, you know, made a jo cracked a joke about her skirt uh, and his later comment that uh, you know, she often dressed uh, what he termed inappropriately um, you know, around the uh, newsroom. Um, so, so anyway, uh, you know, he could certainly take it as referring to both the way it was worded. Friend would do. You are somehow trying to draw an equivalency between that incident seven years ago and what Anna and Jenk are doing now. This includes refusing to apologize for smearing Aaron for doing anti-war and factual journalism and then facing embarrassment over it, trying to blackmail me and then smearing me with an insane claim of sexual harassment. This is hugely toxic to the progressive movement and to the cause of Me Too. It is clearly the only reason Anna and Jenk are doing this is to deflect from the flack they took for smearing Aaron. They're exploiting and cheapening a very serious issue. That's a very good uh, and relevant point there because... Uh... You know, there, there have been a number of cases of this happening where um, people have you know, fabricated or exaggerated incidents uh, to try and damage people's reputation for their own political ends. So, for example, uh, during the um, uh, 2020 uh, election cycle, uh, a fellow named Alex, Alex Morse was running for a congressional seat in, uh, I believe it was Massachusetts, against a uh, you know, very corrupt establishment Democrat. And you know, Morse was uh, smeared as uh, basically um, you know, taking advantage of young men. He's a gay man. Um, you know, when, you know, in fact, uh, he was having 
consensual relationships or hookups with people who were uh, men who were adults and not much younger than he was. Um, and anyway, uh, there have been a number of incidents like that. And what Jimmy is pointing out is that uh, when you do this, when you uh, accuse people of uh, you know, harassment or even of just uh, sexism, uh, and you know, the ap accusation uh, doesn't hold up, uh, it makes it harder for women who really have been harassed or assaulted to uh, be believed. Uh, you know, it's like the boy who cried wolf. Uh, so anyway, let's continue. And he's validating it. Now you claim that you want to stay away from the war? It's not a war. It's a pro-war smear campaign against me and Aaron, by, and by pressing pause on it, you're taking the sides of the smear artists. You're signaling that their behavior is acceptable to you. And it doesn't matter who is friends with who. It's your right to be friends with Spot the Celebrity Camel Toe Misogynists and McCarthyite pro-war smear artists. The question is whether that kind of behavior is acceptable to the progressive left or not. Rest assured that if anyone tried to do such an awful thing to you, I wouldn't be pressing pause to avoid it. I'd be speaking out against it. Like I did for my, with my friend Aaron Matei. So no, I can't possibly understand what you're doing here. I'm appalled. So now Kyle went on to do a segment with Cenk Uger's nephew instead of me. That's, that is hardly staying out of it. And he let, then, and, it, and the subject, of course, came up. And here's how they covered it. I just stay out of, like, all the fucking uh, Jimmy Dore drama or whatever the fuck's going on at any given moment. Like, people will always come in and they're like, dude, what do you think about this? I'm like, no, no. Yeah, I not. feel the same way. I feel the same way. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Like, I, I look, we are I all would much rather, there. <laughs> yeah, I, I would much rather talk about, you know, um, like literally using a pocket pussy than, than <laughs> that. Which I do. I talk about a variety of different things. I just don't think that, like, they, I, I, it's just, it's just hilarious that they're all, la oh, good thing he didn't say nice, nice news. Anyway, so, they they're la so they're laughing off they're they're framing it as Jimmy Dore drama, which is unbelievably disingenuous and a disservice to what's happening. And it's a dishonest framing by news people who should know better, and they do know better. Because I already told them. Because they're doing that. I already sent them that text. They already know this. Everything I wrote in that text, Kyle knows this. And so for Kyle to then go on and do a segment where he fails to mention Anna Blackman, well, here, we'll get to it. Do you want to, re you want to respond well, to Jimmy, that? Yeah, Anna? listen, so that clip, so that. I don't want to comment on an issue. You don't have to comment on an issue. No, no one's going to force you. I personally was disappointed that people like them stayed silent. If they had been smeared like that, I think. I think I can confidently say that I would have spoken up because uh, it's I don't think that kind of smearing should be tolerated. But whatever, you, you, like, you can't demand that someone speak out, speak, uh, speak up for you. OK, but to say if they just said, you know what, we don't want to talk about this, period. But then they don't just say that. Then they try to justify it by doing two things. One is they draw, as you as you told them, this false equivalency between a joke you made seven years ago and you apologize for. And what they did, which is start, which is smearing me and then trying to blackmail you with this, with this ridiculous sexual harassment claim, okay? There's no equivalency between that. And that's why, as you said, it's not a war. It's a smear campaign. And then going publicly and... Whoa, what the hell? That's weird. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can get back to this. back against it so by default you're actually kind of like 
you're actually taking the side of it, whether that was their intention or not. So that's why I think it's fair to criticize them now. And like, you know, you see, Um, and again, this, this also isn't drama. So this is a pattern of behavior at the Young Turks is they just McCarthy smear anti-war award-winning journalists uh, ever since they took the $20 million from Katzenberg. This is, there's been a, a abrupt change and I'll show you it. Here it is. This is not drama. Uh, you know, the way that Assange seems to be backing Donald Trump uh, over and over and over again, uh, it it makes me very seriously question Assange, Assange's efforts to actually be a journalist and not to be a partisan. And I get it. I get why he hates the Democrats. They're trying to put him in prison. Okay, right, but, but so, at the same time, so are Republicans. Let's be clear about and that. And now the Republicans are too, and they have been in the past. But it seems like Assange has picked a side and. And, and look, I, it makes me question uh, his reporting. And so, and, and so that's the situation we're in now. Uh, so now is he just leaking things uh, that he gets and no matter what, in which case I would respect that? Or is he selectively leaking based on his political motives? Now that that uh, suspicion is out there and it's real and it's possible, well, now I'm concerned that, uh, that it can't be trusted. And so, again, that's also not drama. That's, a, that's super huge news that no one else covered except me, that the number one online news show is McCarthy smearing. Well, what they did was they called him a Trumper. They, they said that Julian Assange is siding with the guy at the moment who's trying to kill him, Donald Trump. That's the crazy bull. And why would they do that? I'll, I, I don't know. They took $20 million from Katzenberg, and they're signaling to another donor. Because Junk took twenty million dollars and he blew through it. It's go it blew through it, which is why they have to do their televangelist style of uh, uh, fundraising campaigns, which are uh, stomach churning and shock the conscience. Actually, uh, so that's so. My guess is that that he's uh, signaling to another donor there. Do you think that's important, Aaron, for me to, to bring into this context? That's important. It shows a pattern of behavior. Yeah, sure. Look, there's a lot uh, about Jenk to, to criticize. You know, like in the process, you know, we've also ca caught him lying about you when he called you a liar for yeah. saying that he, yes. uh, that he really advocated War. bombing Syria. He called you a liar for that, and then we, you know, there's tape of him advocating bombing Syria. He called me the preposterous. Yeah, he said I was a preposterous. He said it was a preposterous liar that he <laughs> never. I never said we advocated for war in Syria. And then of course there's a t videotape of him advocating it to my face. Yeah. All three of them, and then I. So go ahead. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and look, and 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 and. Okay. Um, I don't want to go on too long with that. Um, I'll definitely put links to that and uh, other uh, video segments that uh, elaborate on this incident in more detail. Um, but uh, uh, in any case, uh, so Kyle made this episode where he. You know, overlooked. Uh, you know, didn't talk about the, the blackmail, and uh, you know, did this false equivalency thing. And his audience was furious with him. Uh, he got like no positive feedback to speak of on that episode whatsoever in the comments. And uh, there were there were more dislikes and dis than likes of the video. Which, uh, you know, if you're somebody popular and you're getting thousands of reactions. Uh, uh, that's unheard of for somebody who's a popular YouTuber to uh, have that sort of audience reaction. Um, so after Kyle was called out repeatedly by his audience, you know, in the you know, comments on his own video, people who you know, like him and watched his video, um, and also by Jimmy and uh, this episode, um, and Aaron, uh, you know, he did another video. Uh, 
where he sort of, you know, kind of sort of apologized and acknowledged that Anna had blackmailed Jimmy and uh, it was, and that was wrong and that it was wrong of him, him to leave it out and it was wrong of him to, uh, you know, not, um, you know, respond to Jimmy and let him know that, they, or not respond to, but let Jimmy know in advance that they had decided not to have him on the show, <laughs> waiting until two and a half hours after he was scheduled to appear, and they interviewed Chink Iger's nephew in his place. Um, but, uh, you know, he made all sorts of excuses uh, for why he hadn't contacted Jimmy. Um, <laughs> I mean, he did say, well, you know, I, I sh sh we should have contacted him. You know, that was um, you know, not excusable. But then he proceeded to make excuses for it. You know, that, you know, they were basically afraid that he would be mad at them, and uh, they didn't want to um, have to ask him tough questions about um, you know, how he had talked about the incident um, with Anna. Um, and he, you know, in this apology video, he still doubled down on his being angry with. Jimmy's quote-unquote slut-shaming of Anna, uh, saying that, you know, she was dressed uh, inappropriately, which, you know, he didn't make a big deal out of. It was just a matter-of-fact comment he made in the course of uh, characterizing uh, the incident. Um, and, you know, as Jimmy and Aaron talked about, you know, there's just this sort of false equivalence between what Jimmy did, uh, where maybe he didn't you know, have the best choice of words in talking about the incident, uh, you know, because it's not necessarily relevant whether she was dressed appropriately for work or not. Um, and what Anna did, which was um, you know, make, make up a, a smear against uh, Jimmy and uh, blackmail him with it. Uh, and, you know, all the other stuff that Chink and Anna did, uh, you know, Kyle seemed much more angry uh, even though he criticized uh, much of what uh, Anna and Chink did, and then finally, when his back against was against the wall, he criticized Anna's uh, DM to Jimmy as well. But he still seemed more angry at Jimmy than he did at Anna and Chink. You know, did he want to punch uh, uh, Chink uh, for uh, saying that Syria should be bombed? Did he want to punch uh, Anna for flipping Aaron Maté off? Did they? Did he want to punch them for? Uh, all those smears of Aaron and then later of Jimmy, uh, who um, Chink uh, called a right winger and a, a grifter and so forth, as well as Anna's uh, smear. Uh, he didn't say he wanted to beat them up. It was just Jimmy that he expressed anger against. Um, still, in his second video, where he's supposedly apologizing for he for what he did earlier. Um, and... You know, just to uh, kind of sum this up, um, you know, I think a basic thing we on the left need to remember that, unfortunately, Kyle Kalinske still doesn't get is that when one of our allies on the left, uh, or our friends uh, even more so, but you know, still, even if we're not friends with somebody, you know, we, sh we still should uh, you stand up for them. Uh, if they're unfairly personally attacked, uh, particularly if they're attacked by someone with a large following um, and uh, you know, they're, they're smearing uh, the person in ways that could seriously damage their reputation. Uh, so, you know, Alex Morse, uh, you know, smear against him uh, cost him a good chance that he had of uh, beating the corrupt incumbent in a congressional race. Um you know, uh, certainly it cost Tulsi Gabbard a lot in terms of popularity when she was, uh, uh, you know, running for president and was unfairly, uh, you know, smeared, you know, labeled as uh, allied with the Russians and Bashar al-Assad and all, all of that uh, during her uh, presidential campaign. Uh, you know, it, it has consequences when, uh, you know, folks who don't have any genuine facts, fact-based, evidence-based political arguments in response to uh, critics of their views or critics of, the, you know, the, the uh, political uh, establishment, um, you know, 
these attacks have consequences and we can't just let it slide. Um, and you know, that's why so many of the, uh, videos I've done, uh, over the course of making this show have been, uh, rebutting these, uh, you know, uh, absurd attacks against, uh, people, um, on the left. Uh, and, you know, I think that's something that it, it's important to call out when it happens. Uh, okay, well, uh, thank you for watching. I will uh, see you again soon.